Okay, so you want to come to France on vacation, but you have no idea when you should visit. So what is the best time to visit France? It's a question I get a lot. And in this video, I'm going to break that down first by going over some questions to ask yourself that'll help you decide when to book your trip and then the pros and cons of each. And then we'll finish up with me sharing my favorite time to visit France on vacation. So let's get into it. First, bonjour tout le monde. I'm Diane. This is We in France. And I want to start out by saying there is no quote bad time to visit France. There are of course positives for every time of the year and some negatives as well, but you know, there might be a better time to visit depending on where you're going, what you plan on doing while here. Okay. So let's start with a few facts. France is maybe surprisingly, maybe not the third largest country in Europe. And that's after Russia and Ukraine. And it covers roughly 213,000 square miles of surface area. That's 551,000 more or less kilometers squared. And that's roughly the same size as Texas. For my first question, where in France do you want to visit? This is the most important one to consider both from a climate perspective and from a crowds and activity perspective. You know, France has it all. They have skiing in the Alps and the Pyrenees, beautiful coastal hikes, beaches, charming little towns full of culture and history. And I think first it's so important to decide what you want to do, what you want to see. And then that's going to help narrow down the list of the best times to visit. So let's first dig deeper into France's climate. I'm speaking about metropolitan France here. France has four distinct seasons and it's split into four climate zones. So just keep in mind there are regional variations within each of these, but let's start with Western France where I live. It's more of an oceanic climate. We get a decent amount of rain. Winters are cool, but they're not below freezing all winter long. We have very limited snow. Summers aren't super hot in Western France, except for occasional heat waves that last maybe a week or week or two max, but it's not going to be crazy hot. Quickly looking at the continental climate of Eastern central France, we have cold winters, typically hot summers, then the Mediterranean area down in the Southeast of France, along the Mediterranean sea, we have drier, much more mild winters, very hot, dry summers, lots of sunshine year round. This is where Provence is. Then we have the mountain climate where you'd expect in the Alps, you know, we have cold winters with snow, and very mild summer. So maybe some of that speaks to you. Many of you will be traveling to Paris and you know, the capital city has more of that continental climate. So it tends to be more mild. So think cool winters, generally not below freezing for more than a couple of days or a cold front um, and reasonably hot summers again, especially during a heat wave, but the average temperature again, this is the average in July in Paris is 67.6 Fahrenheit or 19.8 Celsius. So not super hot in January. The average temperature there in the winter is 39.7 Fahrenheit, about 4.3 Celsius. And you know, it rains a good amount in Paris. People don't actually realize it has higher precipitation than London at 28.3 inches per year. London has 27.2. Now keep in mind that crummy dreary days don't always add up to a lot of rainfall accumulation. New York city has more rainfall than both London and Paris, but has fewer rainy days overall, but you will have a lot of gray kind of drizzly days in Paris, especially in the winter. Now keep in mind also that air conditioning in France is not quite as commonplace here as it is in places like the U S. So generally you're not going to find um, freezing cold air conditioning in private homes and in public places. While they do have AC in the summer, it's generally not kept super cold, like I just said. So if you really, really hate the heat, just, just note air conditioning is not as widespread. A packing tip I always like to mention is come prepared with layers, a light jacket, even in the spring and summer months and a scarf. We visited the Mont Saint Michel in June a few years back and the wind was cold, very cold, like in the forties. Fahrenheit. So bring that scarf. Even if you think, oh, June, it'll be warm, you know, be prepared uh, with layers that you could easily take on and off and uh, a small travel size umbrella. That's definitely a must. Now, if you have an aversion to heat, you can't stand hot weather. You may want to avoid the South of France during July and especially August. You know, if it's been your dream to ski in France, the winter months, they're an obvious choice. And the ski season typically goes from mid December, through April with February being the peak. And that's a very popular time for French families to ski since kids are off from school for two weeks and a fun French vocab lesson for you. You'll hear ski trips referred to by the French as les vacances au sport d'hiver. A few more questions that I always remind people that are really important to just kind of check in with yourself before booking anything um, is what kinds of activities do you like to do? 
and are they season dependent? So are you looking to just visit Paris because you've always wanted to go and the time of year doesn't matter? Do you want to go to another big city? Is it more, you know, the charming small villages you want to see, the coast, do some boating, sailing, uh, beaching, <laughs> or is it more maybe the magic of the Alsace Christmas markets in the east of France? Next up, very important, do you hate crowds and long lines and wait times? If so, avoid July and August at all costs as well as school vacation times. And I'll link a site below that has those school breaks just for your reference they aren't the same nationwide and you know as you'd expect July and August are peak vacation times for everyone the French included so that means the roads the trains the tourist attractions the beaches they're gonna be at full capacity so taking a road trip on a Saturday in July or August can be a really unpleasant long experience due to traffic on major highways. It's like nothing I've ever seen in the US. And I'll link you to a site below that you want to bookmark for traffic reports. Definitely don't travel by road on Saturday in July or August. And you know, summer vacation is such a big deal that the French language actually has special words that refer to people who vacation in July. And that word is the juilletiste, and Aoussien is for people who vacation in August. Cool, right? Okay, and next up, are you on a tight budget? Are you looking for a deal? Well, summer travel is often when accommodations are the most expensive. So if you want a deal on your apartment rental, traveling at an off-peak time is a way to save money. So if you do have flexibility in your timing, you can grab usually a less expensive flight and the accommodations, just everything will be a little cheaper. Some other important questions. Do you not care for a particular type of weather? As I said, is lack of air conditioning a major pet peeve of yours? And now some quick pros and cons. Winter, we have beautiful holiday decor, winter activities. Flights tend to be cheaper in the winter, but on the con side, it can be dreary, rainy, dark, not a ton of daylight. Spring, as you'd expect, nice weather, fewer crowds, can't really come up with too many cons. Summer, you have more daylight, you have warm weather, great energy with festivals and events, but it could be crowded and expensive with long lines at attractions. Some areas get uncomfortably hot in the summer and there's limited AC. And also some businesses in Paris shut down in August because it's when they take their own vacation there in Paris. So the Parisians are gone, but keep in mind for tourists, that's usually a plus because tourist attractions are open and um, the city might feel less busy since there are fewer Parisians on public transport if they're all on vacation. Vacation. All right, next up, fall. You have the beautiful fall landscapes, milder temperatures, possibly more rain, but um, it's also a, a great time to visit. And let me jump in here to give Niwa a quick shout out. Every video that I speak to you here facing the camera here in my office, I use these dimmable bicolor 660 LED lights. They're top notch. Niwa, thank you very much. And then um, they come with a sturdy stand that adjusts up to 75 inches. You can use them on battery power or plug them into a wall and they create a nice bright even light for all your videos and photo needs. So check them out via the link below. And um, now let me get into my top recommendation for when to visit France. Now, my disclaimer is that my favorite time of the year is around the holidays. I love winter. I love Christmas. My birthday is New Year's Eve. I've always been a winter lover. Maybe that's weird. Um, I love snow. So if you want a magical Christmas experience, you love winter, go to Alsace, see the Christmas markets, ski in the Alps, ski in the Pyrenees. Christmas aside, if you're not looking to specifically come for that Christmas experience and you're not a weirdo like me who loves winter and cold weather, my recommendation would be to come to France during the shoulder season, right before or right after the big peak summer season. So again, avoid July or August, especially the biggest peak time, which would be from mid-July to mid-August. But if you want to visit during the summer, you know, nothing bad's going to happen. It's fine. I've traveled around during the summer. Um, and if you want to come in the summer, August is probably your best bet out of the two months because locals are often vacationing elsewhere. If you want to come to Paris, that is. But my top choices would be May, June, or then wait until September. And this is for a few reasons. Kids will be in school in May, June, and September, so you're gonna have fewer families traveling and fewer tourists overall, so it'll be easier to travel around France, it'll be easier to get reservations, to get you know accommodations, to have just a more relaxed experience. And it's also a little way to save money because accommodations are gonna be cheaper outside of the peak times. And lastly, you're gonna have nice weather. I mean, does it get better than May or June for nice spring weather? And then September, you know, things cool down a little, but it's still really nice. And you're gonna miss those extremes of winter and summer temps, of course, depending on where you're visiting, but it's just a pleasant time to come. So you're gonna have really long days from mid-June, lots of daylight, and then, you know, those that work in tourism, 
they're not exhausted yet from the busy tourist season if you come in May or June. Now, again, this doesn't mean you're going to have a bad trip during the summer or any other time of year, but if you have the flexibility with your timing, you cannot go wrong in May or June or again in September. But like I said, there's no bad time to visit France. You just need to consider a few things, have a look at your checkbook, and um, maybe you'll have to pack some additional clothing or just be more intentional. But wherever you go, France is always a good idea. Okay, now for the question of where to stay. And I think hotels absolutely have their place in your travel plans. Some people always stay in hotels and love them. But I feel like for stays more than a couple of days, I highly, highly recommend renting an apartment or house so you have your own kitchen, you have a little more space, you have some privacy, and there are a bunch of sites where you can rent a vacation apartment rental. You have HomeAway, VRBO, Airbnb, and one I recently discovered is called Plum Guide. And I did a full French apartment tour of the two bedroom Plum Guide apartment we just stayed in, linked here in Saint-Jean-de-Luz down by the Spanish border. Check that out. And basically you can think of Plum Guide as a luxury Airbnb alternative. They only list the top 3% of properties across low, mid, and high range price points. And every single one is vetted by a real person from Plum Guide for quality, location, cleanliness, like 150 checkpoints. And they all have 24 hour customer service where you can get in touch with an actual human by phone. And that's really important. No one expects anything to go wrong, but when it does, it's nice to know they have your back. And with that, I wanna leave it there, turn it over to you and ask you, what time of year have you visited France? How was it? What would you recommend if you think my suggestion for May, June or September is uh, on point or not? And um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more everyday French life and beyond here on We in France, uh, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you back on We in France soon. Salut!